All right then gang, so in this lesson, what I'd like to do is show you how we can fetch data from somewhere and then inject that data into our component templates. So what I want to do is fetch a list of products and then cycle through those products and output a card for each product, where inside the card, we can dynamically output a title, maybe a description, could be a price and a button to view more about that product. So you could get this data from any kind of third party API or your own API entirely up to you. What we're going to do is get it from a local JSON file. Now I've already created that. I've created a data folder over here and inside that a db.json file. Inside that JSON file, we have a product property and the value of that is an array. And inside that array, I've got loads of different product objects. So each product object has an ID property, which is unique, a title, a description, a price, and an image source. Now the image source it's just basically a link to the images from my real merch store. Now, if you want to grab all of this JSON, you can do it's on the GitHub repo over here. Woohoo! So you can just go to lesson nine, then go into data, then db.json and just copy it all from here and paste it into this local file. So the way we're going to use this is by using a package called JSON server. And what JSON server does is it allows us to watch a JSON file locally and wrap that with API endpoints. So we can treat it a bit like an API and fetch that then from our components. So you need JSON server installed on your computer to do this. So open up a terminal and you want to say npm install hyphen G for globally and then JSON hyphen server and press enter. Once that's installed, we can run it by saying JSON server and then hyphen W to watch a file and then hyphen P to specify the port number. It needs to be 4,000. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because the default port number is 3,000. And when we run npm run dev inside the solid project, that actually uses port 3,000. So I'm specifying 4,000 right here. Then we need a path to the file we want to watch. So that's dot forward slash into the data folder, then db.json. When we do that, it's going to give us an endpoint for the different resources that we have. And the resources, by the way, are just the property names. So products in this case. So we could click on this and that's now going to show us all of the products in the browser. So this is all the JSON data. Cool. So we know that's working. And now we can use this endpoint inside our home component and fetch that data. So to fetch data inside a solid component, solid actually gives us a function called create resource. So the way this works is as follows. We say const and then in square brackets, some kind of value. You can call this data if you want. I'm going to call it products, but ultimately this will be the data we get back when we make the fetch and we set it equal to create resource. Like so now we need to import that as well at the top. So let's do that. So I will say import create resource and that comes from SolidJS like so. Okay, so we have this and what we need to do is pass a function into this function right here and it will use that function then to go out and fetch the data. So we could do that in line, but we could also create the function up here as well, which I'm going to do. So const and then I'm going to call it fetch product, but again, call it whatever you want. It's going to be an asynchronous function. And then inside this function, we're going to use basically the fetch API to fetch the data. So we'll say const response is equal to await and then fetch. And then it's going to be the endpoint that we had down here. So I'm going to control C that and then paste it in right here. So now we're going to fetch the data from right here. We want to then return something. We're going to return response.json like so. So it's going to resolve this for us. We need to pass the function in here, fetch products. So when it sees this function, it's going to run this for us automatically. It's going to fetch the data. We're returning the JSON right here. It's going to resolve that. And then we're going to get the product data or the product data right here. Now, what I'd like to do is show you that this has worked. Now, I cannot console.log products like this because remember functions only run once in solid JS and if we do this because this takes some time the function has already run we're not going to have any products by the time this console log runs and I can show you that if I save it and come over here 
we're going to open up the console. I'm going to go to the home page and we can see products is undefined at the minute. So what I'm going to do instead, because we've not looked at client effects yet, is I'm going to come down to the bottom of the template outside of this card and I'm just going to create another paragraph tag and I'm going to output some dynamic content here and all I'm going to do is run some JavaScript. So console.log right here, products like so and then also on this right here we get a loading property and that will either be true or false. So I'm going to log that as well. So we'll say after products, products.loading as well. So that's going to be true to begin with, then false once we actually have the products. Now this is going to be undefined to begin with, but once it changes, it's going to update because it's in the template right here. We're going to see that update in the console and we should see a list of products. So let me save that now. And you can see to begin with, we get undefined and true because it's loading. Then we get the data, which is a list of product objects, awesome, and false because it's no longer loading because we have those uh, products now. So. Now what I'd like to do is instead of outputting all of this stuff right here, I'd like to cycle through the products and output a bit of template for each product. But I'm going to show you how we do that in the next lesson.